See, now I was playing, I was already imagining five horns, contrapuntal, battle rap, like, a, like Dixieland, but with that beat. You know? I say Dixieland because that's, that was the kind of music that had a lot of horns played together, which uh, in the sort of bebop, modern jazz era, that kind of disappeared. They, Horns play together for the head, for the melody, and then uh, you play, and you play, and you play, and the piano plays, the bass plays. But I have to say, I do like uh, collective playing. And then it's good to know when to get out of the way and let an individual come out, too. Like, not to step on anybody, but to enhance. Yeah. Um, as you were playing, and when you sang the melody, right. I, I, I kept hearing the melody. I could not think of anything else. When, yeah. you, were, when you were playing, Thank it, was just, you. it was always there. Thank you. Oh, that's right. It's what I'm playing off of. Yeah. And the truth is, I really just began to tap into the, you know, uh, infinite creative universe of it. And that's just a simple lick. There's nothing special. The eight bar, happy little D major lick. And uh, you know, so that I think that you know, there's a certain lesson in that, or encouragement, really, more than anything, is to to um, never look down on any material. Uh, it's up to us as musicians to take the most minimal, simplest material and make it great, make it deep, make it creative, make it exciting, make it an adventure, make it all the good things, good adjectives that we can put on the music. Mysterious, fresh, uh, 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 aware, um, um, uh, you know, becoming, you know, a lot of the music that I do now is completely unrehearsed. Don't, we don't even have this much. Uh, this, I give it a little melody, okay? The melody is nothing much, but it gets you started. Uh, a lot of the new music, a lot of these CDs, there's like zero composition. And I have to say, it's kind of ironic because I happen to have a certain gift for composing. Would you say that, Ryan? Some people like Gil Evans thought I was a good composer. I don't know, you know, if that's good, true or not. I mean, he did. So, so you know, I have a, actually composing, comes more naturally to me than drumming. Because the very first compositions I ever wrote, which I'm happy to play, I remember, it, was 14. It was great. It sounds like something I could have wrote yesterday. It was already very, uh, you know, high level. Even though I knew nothing, it took a lot longer to write stuff, because I didn't even know chord symbols in those days. So I would have to write it out, like classical style, like every note of the chord. Mm -hmm. you know, but, Later, I figured out, oh, yeah, that's just a D minor. <laughs> okay, easy. <laughs> Give it to a good pianist, and they'll enhance it, even make it better. But uh, drumming was harder, you know, it took a much longer a period of time. So the irony is that, you know, here I'm, doing, I'm really quite a good composer, and I have boxes of compositions that have never been played. Uh, and I'm doing these records that, you know, cost me a pretty good amount of money because I'm broke, basically. Uh, and I produce them myself, you know, I, get, I master them, which costs money because they sound better. It's worth it if you love your own music and the master. Um, and anyway, uh, and there's no composition on it at all, you know, like hardly any. And to me, that's also part of the spiritual practice, which is getting beyond needing to show what you can do. So there's no need to prove I'm a great composer or whatever. More get out of the way of it and, and let the musicians have the total freedom. And when you give that to the right people, the, the thing about it is, if, if you listen to these records, it's, some of you have them, uh, you, you tell me, you heard the record, the, the one with the harpist, Ryan. I did one called, uh, this young lady who played the harp, she's fantastic. And uh, it's called The Illuminated Heart. To me, that sounds like perfectly composed chamber music. I've written a lot of stuff, I could write nothing better or more cohesive, because they're all listening to each other. So every melodic idea that anyone puts out is immediately developed. People are like, ah, great, thankful, okay, good. And we go and go and go 20 minutes and it goes, we created suites, we have things where it's like, you know, it goes from one piece. These are things that, you know, you'd be lucky to write something that cohesive, right? Don't you say so? A lot of them are that way. The one I did with the Danish people, I did, so I didn't need to say one word. And it was like, a, it was like we composed a concerto on the spot for an orchestra. And nobody got in each other's way. When it's time for someone to step out and play, they played, they, fit, they finished it. Young Blood, Tyler, I love you, you played great. But don't stop on me next time, right? The next time's gonna be now. So, yeah, because not only did you may not get out as much as you could, as you could and should and need to get out, it was, it, it broke my fun. 
it, it was coitus interruptus. If you know what I mean. <laughs> so anyway, why don't we play on this film? Anybody come in? It's a D major thing. Obviously, you don't just play that over and over. You have to make stuff up. Play off it, around it, modulate it, put different chords on it. Listen to each other, come up and play. But can we play on that? It's, it's a D major lick. You know what it is? Right. So it has a certain rhythmic cadence too, which of course you can you can destroy it, you can bust it open, but good to know it first. I do recommend always learn melodies, learn the forms before you bust them open, and then bust them open. <laughs> you know, by all means, I encourage you. You know, smash them against the wall, but not before you learn them. Right? Okay. So this is a simple one. You want to come play? Please, please. You're a bass man, right? I am. You, got, you, got, you play upright, I hope, acoustic yeah. bass. Yeah. I mean, I, if you had a lecture, I'd say okay anyway, but I, I like that kind. I have to say. I like the sound, I like the shape of it, I like the whole vibe. I have one in my house, you know. The other record I did, Mother Sky with Tupac, that's a percussion record. Do you have that one? No, you should get that. Uh, that's another one, man. We didn't have one discussion, not one word, no count off, nothing. I just looked at him before every take, and I said, on the, we inhale together, and on the exhale we go. So I look at him, we go. And it's, it's uncanny, I think. Uh, some people it's easy, it's natural. Other people it might take a while. Other people you will never get it. But it's like this from the get-go. It's like right away, on mind. Even, even, it's not even reactive because that would be too late. Like somebody plays something and you react to it. It's even at times, we're going along like this. And all of a sudden, we just make a left. We're going 90 miles an hour, we make a left together. That's something you can only do in a Lamborghini or something like that. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd flip the car. You know? But uh, yeah, we'd have that kind of thing. We, and that was instantaneous with him, kind of a certain magic. I saw him just the other day. I hadn't seen him. Yeah, he's mostly in either Colombia or in Europe. And he doesn't come to Boston much.
I'm really digging it. That's the first thing. But I, I feel like there's something that could be better. And so I wanna t I'll, I'll take the time to stop and talk about it in the hopes that it will make it better and not worse. <laughs> Sometimes a suggestion might be a good suggestion, but it, it makes it worse, at least initially, because you might not be used to it. But, you know, there's an aspect of, um, like, noodling. See, to me, it's never that. It's always make a statement. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, I'm finding more significance and importance in the things that you're playing than you are. Because I hear you play a certain bass like, like one time that's like really nice. And I say, oh yeah, let's work off of that. And immediately it's abandoned. And then another one that's nice, you know. You, at the end you said, okay, 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 okay. It was one of the few times when your piano actually stood out like another horn. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. And I immediately started to play off of that. Yeah. You retreated, stop. And then I, ha I had to abandon the fun that I was going to have playing that. Uh -huh. So it's not just for the music, it's for the drummer. Yeah. You know, we, don't, we don't want to stop. Drummers just want to have fun. Yeah. So that means, you know, it was the same with you, Ryan. You would play something, and, and I would dig it so much, and I would start to play off of that theme, and you would immediately leave it. It's like, oh, well, now what I'm playing doesn't sound right anymore. But I was based on what you're doing. Everything I'm playing is coming from what you're doing, but then you leave it so quick that I don't, and then I sound wrong and I have to change it again, which is not how I would normally play. In other words, I would have easily done seven minutes on that googie, ooh, ah, ooh, eh. It's still based on a babo di, but it's a different variation. It's an upper harmonic of it. And thank goodness you have a great creative, uh, you play a lot of stuff that is great, but it was, it, I wouldn't expect at all. Cool. Yeah. Wouldn't hurt to play the simple stuff sometimes too, yeah, because right. it, after doing all that out stuff, you play something simple, and that would be really like a surprise. <laughs> it's like, whoa, where'd that come from? That sounded like country chord or something. But uh, yeah, so and that that's something. now. But on the other side of that, uh, because I'm talking about in the improvisation, instead of following through on the idea that you introduce, uh, and everybody jumping on it too, like, oh, Brian set out something we're gonna play on that now. Um, in the beginning, you played that but da -da -de 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 -de, verbatim. Well, this is just my taste. There's no right or wrong about it. Way too many times. That's the dutiful. That's the dutiful Ryan. I know that part of you, and it's very good. It comes in handy. I know there's some people that are dutiful, right? <laughs> we need a few. Uh, but that also, at a certain point, doesn't work for the music. Or, or considering that he was doing that. By that time, it was needing you to say, he's what he's going to do, 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 That was getting kind of boring. So, do, 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 you know, you don't wait too long to come in, and you don't stop before it's done. And it's easy to feel these things. It really is. It's easy to feel these things. I don't know what stops people, but I'm guessing it's probably some in their own mind. Should I do this? Maybe I should do that. Should I do that? And by that time, you may have already missed it. Yeah, I guess that's my question, is, is uh, knowing when to come in. I was waiting to feel like I, you, I need to come in I thought in you were too late. Was, I thought, for me, you were too I late. Feel like I but I was still waiting for a moment that felt like... Right. Well, listen, too I late. Was inspired or whatever, you know? Yeah, you, you know, you have to hear something first. If you don't hear anything, it's better not to play. Yeah. yeah definitely. Just to play just to play is not, is not good. Let me say something else, too. The entrance is so important. My teacher, Tsiji, said, all's well that begins well. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and anytime you hear somebody great, whether it's John Coltrane or Pavarotti or Frank Sinatra or Aretha Franklin or whoever it is, the first note is like, wow, <laughs> you know, the entrance is perfect. Mm -hmm. So it is good to be sure when you come to say, yeah, this is gonna, this is what I hear. And then, and then by all means, play it forcefully. I don't mean to say loud, but with full color, full intent. Mm -hmm. Don't come in casually or, see, sometimes that's what, if you notice I used the word that was like an aspect of, um, uh, what I say, uh, We kind of just mess around. 
what the word I use? Noodling. Noodling, yeah, noodling. But highly musical noodling, you know. But no, for me, it's like every note counts. And also register, too. See, I noticed, this is the other way that you listen. I noticed when we were playing, uh, it's hard to hear the bass. He's, the drums are tuned lower than I would. I, hadn't, I didn't get my two hours on the drum set. Usually, They sound really nice. Thank you. Uh, thank you, mm -hmm. They sound really nice. But, uh, so they're very low. The room itself uh, brings a lot of low end. So we had all this, and you were playing down in the low in the middle, and that made no sense to me. I was needing so much. Some higher and something maybe rhythmic to I mean, it's, there's no one right answer. Right. Everybody will, fi who is, will find their own way yeah. to do the right thing. It's an infinite way, and infinite ways to do the wrong thing. <laughs> or something, you know, okay, nobody, nothing was wrong, but it had a little randomness to it, yeah. as opposed to, yeah, I mean that, no, like exactly. And you know, that's something that I think that we can strive for, if you agree. But I, what I've noticed is that all the great music in the world, 